how to create infinite zooms in automatic 1111. Hello, my friends. How are you doing? Everybody loves infinite zooms. Look at that. Flying from Mordor to the Hobbit village through the mountains. Yes, you can do that. And I'm going to show you how. So here's the first step. Of course, you want to go into automatic 1111. And there you want to go to the extensions tab. There is another sub tab here. It's called install from URL. And there's a field in here where you want to put that URL. Now, where do you find that? Of course, I've linked that below the video. Also, here we have the GitHub page. And when you scroll down, you can find that link here. And you want to copy that over into this text box here for the URL. Then you click here on install and you wait until this is finished. It will tell you in a little text down here. Next, you go to the installed tab. You click here on check for updates and then you click on apply and restart UI. Let that finish. Let the UI restart. Now, here's a word of advice. For me, I still got errors just by restarting the UI. So what I did is you need to close the CMD window completely and then restart automatic 1111 fresh and then it worked for me. Now, when you restart that, you will see you have a new tab here called Infinite Zoom. Now, the best way to use this is with an in-paint model. Go to Civit AI. You want to look for your favorite models and see if they have an in-paint version in here. This is for realistic vision. Here is one for Ref Animated, which is one of my favorite models. And here you can see there is an in-paint version 1.2.1 and another one that is 1.1. You can download that. And when you do that, you're going to load that into your automatic 1111 folder, into the models folder, into the stable diffusion folder with all of your other models. After the download is done, you're going into the web UI again. You click here on that blue arrow. So this is loading all of the new models in there. And then you're going to select the models that you have downloaded. And they say in painting in the name. Now let's talk about how to use this new extension. Now, first of all, if you have these additional fields up here that are more advanced settings, you want to set clip skip to one. You want to choose your VAE here. I'm using the 840,000 version. And then the noise multiplier should be at one and apply color correction should be hooked off. So there should be no hook here. Make sure that all these settings are like that. If you don't have them, you probably don't need to worry about them because that should be the standard setting. Now down here in the tab, you can see there is a link to the Discord. I would absolutely suggest you to join that Discord on there. There's very helpful people. The developer of the extension is also on there. And you can see a lot of very cool examples of what other people have created as an inspiration. So this is really one of the best ways to get started with this extension. Now let's go about the settings here. First, we have here the main tab. And here we have our outpainting steps. So this is mainly working with outpainting where a small image is rendered and then it is extended to the sides with new information around that and then extended again. Now the steps is not the render steps. This means how often this is extended to the outside. Now below that, you can see the prompts you want to write here and the outpainting steps. So in my case, I have 10 outpainting steps, which means that my image is going to be outpainted 10 times in a row. And here for the first step here for the number, I will tell when the next prompt is going to be used in the next outpaint. So in this case, step zero, step one, step two are rendered with my first prompt. Then step three, step four, step five are rendered with the second prompt. It's kind of similar to the forum. This part of the interface will probably change rather soon into a single box where you write everything in one text. If you need additional rows, so you want to have more prompts in here, you just click here on new row to add an extra row 
in this version of the UI. Then below that you have the negative prompt as usual. Below that you have the sampler, you have the output width. And here I would suggest for testing your prompts if you get started to set this to 256 by 256. So the rendering is going faster for you. Now this will not give you nice quality. It will not look good, but you get a good idea if your prompt is working and what kind of adjustments you want to do. So for testing, this speeds up everything. Afterwards, you can set it up to higher. And if your GPU can render it in that quality and if you have the time, I would suggest to set either one or both values to 768 so you get a nice resolution for your video. Below that, of course, we have the guidance scale and we have here the sampling steps. Now, because this is rendering from latent noise, the developer says it's good to have this as 50 steps. They also play around with lower step counts, but I found that 50 steps actually gives you pretty good results. Below this, you can also set an initial image so that you can give an inspiration for the AI, what you want to have in your infinite zoom. So this can really help you get better results and also have more control over the result. Below that, you have a batch count. Probably you want to set this to one, but if you're going to go for a coffee break, maybe set this to five or to 10. So this is creating 10 videos for you. Now let's scroll up and here we have two more tabs. The second tab says video here. The first one says frame per second. Now the interesting thing here is this is what is created from your images, but no matter how low or high you set the frame rate, this is not going to render more images. So you can leave that at 30 frames per second to get a smooth zoom and you don't have to limit that because the rendering time is taking the same. This is just for animating the zoom after the renders are finished. Here you can also select zoom out or zoom in. They have different benefits. I often found that zoom in is a little bit more consistent because it gives you a full picture and then it renders inside of that picture. So there's kind of an idea what is there while by zooming out, it is rendering from latent noise. So it doesn't know anything about what is going to be there and that can make it a little bit more unstable, but you want to play around with that. Now, here's a very important thing to understand. When you have zoom out, this is rendering your layers here, your different prompts from the top to the bottom. But when you have zoom in, this is not rendering it from the top to the bottom. It is rendering it from the bottom to the top. So it's just going the other way around. Next, we have here the number of start frames dupe. And then for the last frame, this means that the animation is simply waiting for this amount of frames. If you want to have a little pause at the start or a little pause at the end. Below that, you have the zoom speed in seconds. Now this will also influence the length of your video and the initial state is set to one. I find that a little bit fast, so maybe try 1.5 or two, which gives a nice slow zoom so you can see all of the nice details in your rendered image. In the next tab here, we have your outpainting settings. And I would mainly advise to leave everything here as is. The first one, denoise strength, is supposed to be always at one. So this is probably going to be removed in a future update. The mask blur is meant to be at zero. I thought a higher mask blur is going to give me softer borders here, but that was actually not the case. I got really hard borders with a higher number. So probably this is going to be fixed in the future. Now, because this is out painting, you mainly want to use latent noise because for the out painting, there's actually no information around the image that can be used. And also for the other settings, you can experiment with them, but I would leave them as they are. After all of this is set up, you simply click on generate video. This is going to render through the animation, automatically create a video for you. And then the video is displayed here. Now at the very bottom, you have several buttons here. One is for the output folder. This is going to lead you to your image to image folder. Now you will not find this in the date folders or in the main folder for image to image, but instead there is a separate folder that's called infinite zooms. And in there you will find all of the videos. 
And when you go to your text to image folder, there you will only find the initial first image, but not the rest. But that might be a good idea because then you can drag this into your initial image area here to use it also for your next render. Right now there is no seed setting. So once you have rendered it, the next render is going to be different. This is also going to be added in a future update. And that's already it, my friends. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video and see you soon. Bye. Oh, you're still here. So uh, this is the end screen. There's other stuff you can watch like this or that's really cool. And yeah, I hope I see you soon. Uh, leave a like if you haven't yet. And well, um, yeah. <laughs>